224 assembly seats in Karnataka will head to polls in a single phase on May 10. The results will be declared on May 30. Now, the EC said the seizures so far are close to the entire amount of uh, the last election and that citizens will need to help them conduct a fair election. Special booths will be set up for differently able voters and vote from home facility will also be made available. Election time in Karnataka. The BJP is looking to retain its only stronghold in the south, while the Congress will be hoping to storm back to power. Waiting in the shadows is HD Kumaraswamy's JDS. If neither party gets an outright majority, then he could play kingmaker. But first, the numbers that matter. Karnataka will be voting in a single phase on the 10th of May. The results will be declared on the 13th. The battle is for 224 seats in the Karnataka Assembly, where the majority mark is 113. There are more than 5 crore registered voters in the state. Out of them, around 9 lakh are first-time voters. The polling will be done across more than 58,000 stations to be set up by the Election Commission. By all accounts, it promises to be a cracker. A tough fight between the Congress and the BJP. Which brings us to the big issues that will play on the voters' minds. Corruption is one of them. The BJP government has stumbled from one corruption case to another. Contractors say 40% commission has become the norm. The recent raid and arrest of BJP MLA Virupakshappa will also be fresh in public memory. Another issue is the caste and quota agitations. Lingayats and Vokaligas have been asking for more reservation from the government. Chief Minister Bommai did increase the quota, but he did so at the cost of a 4% quota for Muslims. The Congress has promised to reverse that decision. Issue number three is urban infrastructure, especially in the capital, Bengaluru. The city's civic apathy has become notorious with pothole deaths and accidents almost every week. The Congress says it's a side effect of the BJP's corruption and misgovernance. Issue number four is the polarization campaign. The BJP has been drumming up the rhetoric on issues like Tipu Sultan and hijab. They also dabbled with the idea of banning halal meat. Much like in Gujarat last year, the party is banking on Prime Minister Modi to bring in the votes. The PM has already visited Karnataka seven times this year. But the question is, will a central face help the BJP in a state where local support and caste loyalties are predominant? Only time will tell. For the Congress, it's a problem of plenty. They have announced candidates for 124 seats, which is more than half the field. But infighting remains a challenge. <laughs> While Siddharamaya appears to be the chief ministerial face, state party chief D.K. Shivakumar is a force to reckon with. He's a vocalical leader and harbors chief ministerial ambitions. Another face to watch out for is B.S. Yedurappa. He isn't contesting, but his Lingayat support base will be key to the BJP's plan. It's a chance for him to stamp his authority as a vote puller. For Chief Minister Bommai, it's a chance to step out of the shadows and take charge. To prove that Yedurappa's retirement and his elevation was justified. There are battles within battles looming in Karnataka. The results on 13th of May will set the stage for next year's general elections. A Congress victory would oust the BJP from southern India. It would also be a decisive mandate against a polarization campaign that was years in the making. And don't forget, Karnataka is an economic powerhouse. It makes up 8% of India's GDP and has cultivated key industries like IT, aerospace and defense. <laughs>